Good morning, everyone. So hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I'm still pretty new to this live thing. It's the second live stream we've done. Today we're going to be working on this. So it's a pretty cool little lowrider toy. And I found it th this at the Goodwill pre-COVID. And it's pretty cool. So of course, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open this up. Now we're gonna try to keep this pretty simple today. Um, I am going to go ahead and do like a overview for probably, probably sometime this week. I'll have an overview of the live stream just in vlog form just to make everything a little bit quicker and just in case you are working on one of these or you know whatever the case may be you just want to watch it you'll have an overview of the live stream i don't know how long this will take or if we will be able to complete all of this on live stream but we're gonna try and like i said we'll have an overview if not so you'll be able to watch it a little bit later and see all the modifications and all the bends that we end up doing These are rather long bolts here. There we go. Finally broke a loose. Okay. Now the bolts are out. Now I purchased this because I want to do like a race car series type thing. And this is one of many of the little race cars I have. I actually have a Wiggles race car as well that I'm going to be doing probably in the future. I shouldn't say the near future because I've got so many things on the horizon that I am working on. But at the same time, I don't know when they're going to be finished. But hopefully we can get that going here pretty soon because I think you could do some funny stop motion animation videos with that and it'll it'll overall just be a fun little project so this board isn't looking super promising unfortunately um it looks like a newer board which i was hoping this was an older instrument but it is looking it's looking kind of new Huh. Well, wish for the best. Let's hope for this, man. that all taken care of and what we're going to do because if you were on my last live stream you may remember I actually fried an instrument just because I didn't put a uh, master on and off switch before we started messing around with it so I'm not going to make that same mistake twice I actually have a backup instrument just in case but I don't want to get halfway through this instrument and then have that happen again so we are going to go ahead and add a master on and off switch for this one Okay. 
Now the mats are on an off switch. Um, if you haven't watched my vlogs, or maybe you have, and we'll just go over it again. Essentially all we're doing is we're putting a single throw, single pull toggle switch in between the actual battery cable and the circuit board. And what that's doing is it's cutting off all the power to the circuit board, so it's essentially going to be like pulling the batteries out. So every time I flip this over, it's going to be like pulling the batteries out. And the reason we do this is in case it crashes, there are some hard crashes that require all the power to actually be pulled out in order for it to work again. And we are just preventing that in the future from happening. I think I'm a little bit out of camera view here. I'm going to fix that. Give me one second. Okay, so you can see me a little bit better. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna fix my soldering iron here for a second. Give me one second, please. Okay, that is better. We have a little bit more length. And hopefully you guys can see me better now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a bit more solder onto this wire right here, because as you've seen, it just kind of popped out. There we go. Alright, so mounting this is going to be kind of interesting. I feel like we have all of this front space, but I also feel like this one's going to be kind of tricky. I know we have the roof space, so we're just going to make it as if we're running to the roof here. It's instruments like this that are kind of tricky where they have like the wheel things right here. Obviously not all of them are going to be like wheel wells and stuff like that, but it's just this little added stuff that you don't want to remove it can be a bit tricky when you're actually mounting stuff. Yeah, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to ask me and I will do my best to answer them. Okay, there we go. I'm going to add a little bit of solder onto the other side. Now we're just adding that other side of the toggle switch. Let's go ahead and add it here. All right, now we should be good.
So that is our master on and off switch right there. So just in case it crashes or anything, we have that as a backup that we can go ahead and essentially pull the batteries out just by flipping the switch. And I'm figuring we're gonna probably run it probably up here. We may end up mounting everything up here because it seems like we have a lot of space there. But we will see, we'll see how that goes. And by doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and assume we're gonna be mounting up on the hood again just because I'm not super worried about there being too much excess wire on this. We're not going crazy, so. So I'm going to trim this down a bit. As you can see, we have some excess right there. And I'm going to go ahead and trim that down. Not super worried about it hitting something else, but just in case. We're going to feed this one under the resistor if we can. All right, so now we have that installed and this is our tempo tone control right here, as simplistic as it is. So, I guess I have this off, but. So that's our tempo tone control, but what we want to do is add it onto a switch. And how we're gonna do that is we're actually going to, we know both of these are reactive. So we are going to go to the ground and see which one reacts to the ground. And that's going to be our median. So the median is going to go on a switch because it's the one that reacts to both. And to better explain this, it'd probably be easier just to show you. All right, so that one is reacting, which is kind of strange. So, just for curiosity, I'm going to go ahead because it should be doing the opposite effect. We should actually be going down in tempo and we're going up for some weird reason. So, So yeah, this is rather strange because we are going up in tempo. I've had this happen before and I don't remember how I went about fixing it, but we're gonna go ahead and test some points out and just see kind of where we're at on this. So it seems on the other side of this transistor, it's actually giving us the effect that we want, and that is dropping in tone, 
which funny enough, this is actually the speaker wire as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and tag onto that and then see if that's gonna crash the instrument when we do that. And when I say do that, I mean like actually feed it onto this wire. So we may need a resistor on it, we may not. But we are going to check it out, see what we can do here. And then just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and run both speaker wires out right here. Okay, our speaker wires are going to be these blue wires right here that are running into the speaker. Which this is going to be kind of a hard solder here. Because they are right next to each other. So what I like to do is I like to do the one on the inside, or at least my inside. Um, that's going to be, since I'm right handed, it's going to be the one on the left. If you're left handed, it's going to be your one on the right typically. I think it just makes it a slight bit easier. Okay, I don't really like how that's sitting right there. We're going to drop it in just a tiny bit more. Okay, there we go. So that looks better. Okay, so that looks good right there. Are you going to do Blues, Twos, Blues Clues toys next? I can't speak today. Um, I actually don't have any Blues Clues stuff in shop as of now. More than likely, the next thing you're going to see is a Wiggles instrument that I've done. And it's going to be a Wiggles guitar, but it's going to be different. It's not the Iowan Chef cover. It's actually another one. So... I think it's going to be like v6 at this point but it was a custom order that i did but i didn't want to do two wiggles guitars right in a row um if i can get the time then i'm probably going to try to get another video in front of that just because i'm sure you guys are pretty tired of seeing the wiggles guitars at this point but um it's a video that i already have and i just need to edit and make but it really depends on how much time I have to actually get another instrument up. So, okay, I um, think we're back up. So, you guys hear me? That was kind of weird. I don't know what happened there. Um, I don't know where we're at exactly. I, I was actually just talking and then the TV went black. So I have all the comments running to the TV and everything. And uh, yeah, it just went black. Um, but I was, I was saying, I don't know if you guys heard it or not. I don't know when that cut out. But I was saying that in response to uh, Anthony on the Blues Clues. Currently, I don't have anything Blues Clues in it. Um, and the next thing you guys may see, which I apologize if I already said it. And I'm going to keep working while I do this as well. But uh, the next thing you guys will probably see is a Wiggles guitar. And I'm saying probably because I've already shot the vlog. It's just editing and doing all that stuff at this point. But you guys have seen the Wiggles guitar so much that I don't really want to post it next. I'm actually hoping that um, I'm going to be able to get something else in its place for this coming week. But 
Um, I, Pre-COVID, I was actually training for a powerlifting competition. And the powerlifting competition, of course, got canceled when all this stuff started going down. So it was postponed. But now that everything is coming back up, I'm starting back into training. So now I'm back in the gym and everything. So really just waiting to see how things go. Hoping to get some time this week to actually get into another instrument. But between being back in the gym and training for the powerlifting competition again, and just overall um, being a forager and being out in the woods and trying to get all these spring flowers before they go away, um, just really depends on you know how much time I get. But as of right now, nothing blues clues in the shop at the moment that I can actually do. But I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what comes up next week, but I can guarantee you it's not gonna be Blues Clues. It's probably gonna be Wiggles or some other type of instrument. So we have now added the Pro Sound right here. And weird enough, when I was testing that out, and I don't know if it cut out before I was showing testing it out or whatever, but it was actually doing the opposite effect of what it was originally doing. So we may have been latching onto the wrong point. So see, that's strange. That's not what we're looking for. Very weird. So let's go ahead and retest these points out. actual side of this transistor but it runs right there so I don't think so we're gonna go ahead and try to use this screwdriver to kind of figure out where we're going with this to me sounded like it was going down but then it just crashed right there so I don't know It seems like it's going down as well over here. That's the point we're looking for right there. All right, so we're going to latch onto this point. So this is actually tied in with the LEDs, but for some reason it's given us the effect we want. So we're gonna go ahead and use it. These instruments are not always black and white. They're definitely, they definitely have some deviations on them when you get searching around in here. It's never really the same procedure. Once in a while you'll get lucky and it'll be a familiar procedure, but a lot of times it's really not.
make sure the phone isn't going to sleep or whatever. Okay. Yeah, I'm not really sure what happened there. Good deal. So there we go. Let's go ahead and test this out. So it looks like we are going to need a resistor on this high point. Oh. Trying to figure out why that wasn't giving us the effect we wanted here. And then we were just getting it. It looks like it actually came off. So we're just going to re-solder that back on. Okay, that looks good. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, now we know we are going to need some type of resistor on this top just because we crashed it a second ago. But I'm going to go ahead and add the median in here. And then we're just going to work with them. We're just going to work on them individually. strange it doesn't seem to be giving us an effect now
guessing this thing came off again. I'm gonna wiggle it off just in case, and we're gonna resolder it. This thing is giving us some trouble. Okay, everyone fingers crossed. It seems like it is crashing at the bottom there. So we're going to need something, but it, it does. It's not technically crashing, it's just stopping. Yeah, it's just stopping. So we're going to need some type of resistor there, and we might not have an entire drop. So that's going to be strange. I curiosity I'm gonna go ahead and remount this just back onto here just to see what happens if we plug it in and see if it's still giving us the same effect or see if that was kind of a fluke and we can get away with actually mounting directly on the ground here So it is giving us the same effect as the other one is, but we're still getting that. So it's dropping all the way down, but then it crashes. But it's not technically crashing, that's kind of the... So you can hear it kind of inching along. Actually, it seems like it sent it in a loop. So that's kind of interesting. I'm just going to go ahead and keep that. No resistor needed on that one. It's dropping all the way down, and it is stopping it. But then when you hit the button again, it seems to send it in kind of a looping frenzy. So that's pretty cool. We're just going to go ahead and leave that. All right, now we're working with the positive. So that's why it is good to go ahead and double check your work once you get everything set up. So as you've seen, it was giving us a uptick in tempo when we were actually touching to this before. But once we actually like hooked it up, it did exactly what we were normally expecting it to. So sometimes those type of things happen. Okay, bagger resistors. I'm going to go ahead and start out with a 250k, just see where that kind of lands us.
250k is working good. So what we're gonna do is drop this down. We're gonna go and get another 250k, see if we can run them in parallel. See if that gives us a bit of a higher speed without a crash. So two 250Ks seem to be working good. That's a pretty high pitch. All right, so we're definitely tagging these two in. Just in case, let's go ahead and try to run one more. Well, that is interesting. So you can see the instrument's actually going in this weird state where it's, it seems to be looping at a very, very high speed and seems to also be cutting in and out of volume. So that's a really cool effect and that's one that we could actually keep. What I'm gonna do is I'm not going to put the other 250K resistor on here, but I'm going to latch these two on here and then we're gonna latch a wire on both sides. And this is gonna be sort of an overdrive switch. That's what we're gonna call it because it sounds pretty cool, especially in a car. So, this is gonna be our overdrive switch. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make a switch with a 250K on the side of it. And then that's gonna allow us to actually pull in the 250K whenever we so please. And then we can turn up the actual um, tempo tone control and have that 250K added into the mix. There we go. Let's go ahead and solder this on so it doesn't come off. All right, I need to find one more toggle switch.
go ahead and touch the screen again. Just make sure this doesn't fall asleep. Don't want us to cut it off again. We have this now ran. Probably solder this a bit better. So that's what we have right there. So 250K added in here, and then this is gonna allow us to actually switch it into the circuit and then out of the circuit. So let's do this. And how we're gonna run this side is we're gonna run it just like you would a resistor. I'm at a little extra length here just so I can wrap them in gonna make it a little more stable. I shouldn't say stable, it's gonna make the solder points more sturdy. Let's solder these guys in. I think we are good there. Okay, so that solder ended up super goofy looking, but it's, it's going to work. It looks pretty good. Just looks a bit strange. The pot kind of kicked to the side there, but it works. What we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and tape it to make sure that resistor doesn't kick over and short circuit everything. Yeah, as I said earlier in the stream, I'm probably going to have this up and I'm probably going to have an overview this week i'm guessing of this entire i guess entire build it's going to be like a normal vlog of the entire build obviously going to be a little bit different looking since this is the only camera angle i have but it's looking like we might get this done i don't think we've been live that long so this is pretty cool it looks like we will get this done and yeah it's going to be you know, my average vlog where there's going to be music and all that stuff. And I'll probably give you guys a garden update too. We've got the garden absolutely packed with everything. The citrus trees are rocking right now. So it's really good to see because we had a couple that were struggling due to light situations. And unfortunately, my uh, Kafara lime, it's not doing good at all. It has no leaves on it whatsoever. We actually had to cut back multiple times, cut back the dead. So I don't think it's going to make it. It's now just pushing out nodes that have no leaves on them. And I don't really know what to do about it. So I've reached out to some people and everybody tells you stuff and that stuff doesn't work. But the good part is I did start a cutting successfully off of it. So maybe we'll just run with the cutting and, you know, have it producing limes within the next couple of years. But everything else is doing fantastic. I have, I think... I'm seeing like four graphs that are sitting right now that are probably going to be, you know, pushing out some weird stuff. But uh, yeah, everything's doing great. So I think a garden update. It's about time to do one just for fun. In case you guys are interested in that. So I'll probably have that added in the vlog or I'll have something added in. 
But now it should be our tempo tone control right here. Let me figure out when I go with the button. All right, now let's try the overdrive. So it's not doing what we originally wanted it to do. What's more than likely happening here is the internal resistance isn't picking up. So let's go ahead and try this one more time. So internal resistance is the resistance caused by the wires and everything being connected. So through the solder points, through the actual wires themselves and all of that. So it seems like this may be the situation considering we were getting pretty good effects just by connecting it in there. Or we may have a bad solder point, one or the other. So we'll go ahead and check here. Try to re-solder everything down. Go ahead and check it once we solder that. So it's still not giving us the effect that we wanted. So all these solder points look good right here. So let's go ahead and grab another 250K and see if we can restore that by just adding another one in the mix. And hopefully this isn't just something that I'm overlooking. I've done it before where I've got into vlogs and then uh, dropped my headphone there. but. I got into vlogs and then later on looked back and was like, oh, that was the issue right there. And just didn't think of it in the moment. So hopefully it's not one of those type of situations. But if I'm overlooking anything, let me know. So still no go on that one. So let's go ahead and do another one. The hope is we will get it eventually. So you may be wondering why I always use these 250Ks instead of just going with other ones. Uh, there's two reasons here. The first one is I have about a thousand of these. Like literally I ordered them off eBay and I think a bulk of a thousand because it was a ridiculously cheap price. 
And the second one is I don't have my resistors labeled. I have very few resistors labeled inside of my bag and I've been meaning to go through and do that, but that's something that I don't think procrastination is super bad on because I've got a lot of resistors. <laughs> using my body contact to actually short it out like that just to make sure that it's still there it appears to be so let's go ahead and add two more Now the downside of adding all these resistors and stuff is it's going to make it so where the instrument, if anything goes wrong with it, it's more than likely all of these resistors and all of that stuff. There's some stuff I make to actually sell and then there's other stuff like this that I make because it's gonna hang around in the shop for a while and I'm gonna be playing with it quite a bit. And this is just one of those things that I'm gonna be keeping so if something goes wrong, I know where it's at and I'm not super worried about opening it back up and then redoing something. Whereas if you sell it, obviously, you're going to be a little more worried about it. Right, so it's sorted on it, but I still not. Now I was using my body contact to actually pull on this, and for some reason that seems to add it. That might actually be the deal, so let's check that out. So when I take my body contact off of it, it seems to go back down to normal range or at least not glitching out like that. So let's go ahead and just confirm here because it might actually be the body contact adding that glitch into it. We're gonna hope not, but. Okay, so that's it right there and I'm not touching it. So that's just one more resistor.
So that is a resistor mess right there, but it works. So let's go ahead and retape all this stuff back up. Already added the pro sound in, so I think technically that is it. But we're, we are going to add some more stuff because I didn't think we would get done this fast. I mean, we've only been live streaming for what an hour, and like five minutes of that has been cut out, and then ten minutes of that has been talking. <laughs> so we're going to go see if we can add some LEDs because what this thing lacks, I noticed. Is it lacks headlights? Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to add. We can add headlights, but we're going to try. We're going to go ahead and try to drill through those and maybe add some mini LEDs in there. We will see. I'm going to drop all the buttons out of here. But it seems loud enough that it should be able to support some LEDs. Alright, so what kind of LEDs are we feeling? Are we feeling like color changing because that's what I typically go with or you guys want to do a static LED? Just to start it out and test it. Let's go ahead and go with a color changing fast RGB LED. So I actually need one of these. All right, so we're gonna make our lives a lot easier and go ahead and switch this down. Monotonic Skeleton, welcome to the chat. And that's a second example of me not being able to speak today. Miss Lila, we will color change the LEDs. I always like them as well. I think they just, they're just better. You just have so much more options in one. Just kind of gives it a specific flair, I think. You can see I'm having kind of trouble with these pads. These are rather old pads. They're kind of cracked and everything. I mean, they're still working great, but without the buttons, they're not really working that great. All right, so the color changing LEDs are good to go on this one. Due to the size right here, I'm thinking we should go with many color changing LEDs. Just because I don't want to end up cracking the front of the instrument. So we're going to go ahead and swap these out for many LEDs. Let's go a little bit crazy here. Let's go, uh, let's go two mini LEDs in the headlight place and then we'll do fast changing RGB LEDs possibly underneath, just kind of as their own little thing. 
I think it'll still look pretty car-like. Okay. Now what you can do here is you can actually um, run these in two ways. You can run it right here where we're going to be tagging onto this. Um, not thinking here, the one fourth pro sound, and then you can run the LEDs out from there. Now, typically, what I've had problems with when I do this is when you plug the pro sound in, the LEDs won't be as strong or they won't come on at all. So, what I have been doing here recently is actually tagging on the pro sound to the LEDs. So, what I'm going to do, which is going to be kind of backstepping here but it's not gonna to be too horrible. We're gonna go ahead and cut this so we can add the LEDs in. Use the wire cutters to make it a little bit more simple. So our LEDs are gonna go here and then wherever we run our pro sound is gonna be added onto that. Let's just make sure we have the correct side. All right, so there we go. So we definitely do not want it to be cutting out like it did. So this is another example right here of what you can do to actually make the point stronger is I like to wrap the wire around. So if you kind of see how I run my LEDs, it's usually kind of an excessive length of wire that I strip off and then I run it around the LED and then I'll actually bend the LED down almost as a clamp onto the wire. And I'm gonna give you a better example of that here in a second. I'm gonna run both of these LEDs directly onto this one. So both of these came off, so I'm just going to take this opportunity to run this a little bit differently. Run the wires together before I put them on. All right, there we go. Now we have three wires in here. You can see how we just clamped them down. There we go. Let's go ahead and solder this. Well, we should test that first. There we go.
so that should be good. Test that more time. That looks good. Now the shorter wire right here, I'm gonna run to the bigger LED because I'm planning on having that as right below this little LED. So it's gonna be a lot closer. The other one's gonna be running to the other small LED on the front of the grill. Turning that down just because it's making it a bit difficult to catch it in time. Right, so there we go. That looks fantastic. All right, and I need one more wire that I'm gonna be adding to this. And that's gonna be the other big LED on the other side. very complicated for newbies it is um i tried to make some videos like back to the basics that was kind of back for more simplistic stuff and i understand it is complicated when you're first getting started the best thing i can do is i, I try to explain it very well sometimes i don't but if you ever have any questions or anything, feel free to message me on Facebook or Instagram. I know YouTube doesn't have a messaging system anymore, but feel free to message me on either of those platforms. I'm on under Ghostfire Electronics on both. I don't use Twitter anymore, so you'll find me on Twitter, but you'll never find a post from me just because I don't even remember the password. But if you ever have any trouble with anything or you're getting into this, uh, feel free to message me. I'm always up chat and I'm always up to help you out in any way that, you know, I can be needed. So you can see we're kind of getting a sci-fi sound from these RGB LEDs. I don't really mind that. It's maybe worth going ahead and adding... Maybe worth going ahead and adding a toggle switch onto this just so that sci fi sound could be optional. We will see. I don't know. I really like the sci fi sound, but I feel like once I get this plugged up to a computer, it's going to be. It's going to be making that quite a bit more frequently and it's probably going to be a bit too loud. 
So we're probably just going to make that optional. Alright, so that looks good. Just cutting off some excess here. May solder that a bit better down the side. I'm about to use some electrical tape to solder, I guess. So that looks really good. Let's just test everything. So really that's the only time you hear the sci-fi sound is on that one. But just in case, I am going to go ahead and add that, add that toggle switch in. So we have it right there. So I'm going to guess we're going to be running the toggle switch right about maybe the hood.
All right, so that is all soldered in right there. I believe my headset died. Can you guys still hear me? I'm gonna set these over there. All right, good. Glad you guys can still hear me. Yeah, I'm using wireless headset, so wasn't really sure it would last the whole time, but glad you can still hear me regardless. I wasn't sure if YouTube would switch directly over or what the deal is. All right, so that looks good to me, and we're gonna go ahead and test this out. I don't know why I put this back, but. So that is everything, so now we're going to go ahead and mount everything. This is the fun part that is a lot shorter inside the vlogs than it actually is in real life. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pop these buttons out. Alright. And one thing I am going to do, I probably should just go ahead and do it this way. I should put the buttons back in and I should put the uh, circuit board back in just so we kind of know what we're dealing with as far as space. Monatomic skeleton, I appreciate that. Yeah, I kind of like... I kind of have a um, taste for some weird instruments as far as circuit bending. For some reason, I got really fascinated with dolls when it comes to circuit bending. They just kind of have like a specific type of darkness to it. But at the same time, I also really like toys like this. Where they're just cars. I don't, I don't know why. Just, uh really strange stuff and like Pete the piano that's right down my alley just kind of has like a slight creepy vibe to it but at the same time it reminds me of um sort of like the Robin Williams toys movie which was very 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 long ago I think it was actually made before I was even born possibly I was born in 1992 so you'd have to tell me but uh you know, it's, it's an older movie, but it just has that really creepy, playful vibe to it. And that's kind of what I get with, like, Pete the Piano and stuff like that. So this is going to be an absolute pain because we just got the bolts stuck right beside the speaker. And speakers are magnetic, so... Yeah, this is not going to be super fun. Oh, that wasn't too bad. I was complaining about it, and I guess it heard me and felt sorry. <laughs> okay, now we have our space right here. So the LEDs are going to take absolutely nothing to mount. So what we're going to do is we're going to start mounting up at top right here. Let's see what we're going to mount. Let's do... Alright, we're going to try this. We're going to try the potentiometer right in the back here. And then we're going to do the two toggle switches up front.
potentiometer, I'm going to go from the bottom here. Just because it's... It has a bolt down here that's going to need to go in. Alright. So that looks like the mounting space right there. I'm not sure where my step up went. I'm going to have to check. Sorry about that. So I'm hoping that this step up works out well. Sometimes, I know you can't really tell, but this type of plastic is very strange. And sometimes something like this, as you can see, it kind of already did. Plastic like this very often flakes off. So we're going to hope that it doesn't do that. If it does, there's always the option of painting it or even putting a large spacer on below the hardware. So we have a few tricks up our sleeve if it does. Uh, don't do it. We're going to cut it off. We go. You see that piece is still kind of flaking, but Yeah, Pete is for sure creepy. Um, I'm actually wanting to do some upgrades to him here pretty soon. So I have the idea that I want to get another Wiggles guitar, the one that I've done many, many, many times. And I want to just like sink a week into it and make it just the absolute ultimate Wiggles guitar with like a upgraded paint job and everything. And there's a lot of bends that I don't typically put on there because they're not exactly stable. But I want to try to get them as stable as possible. Just stable enough to keep in shop. And I want to sort of do the same thing with Pete. So there's, last time I was messing around with the Pete the piano, I found quite a few different bins that, again, really aren't stable. And those types of bins are really hard to stabilize because they actually pretty much run off the radio frequency waves that your body picks up from the air. So it's not really something that you add in because it crashes stuff. And typically when things crash, people automatically think that it's, you know, a malfunction in the circuit bending or something like that. Whereas if you keep in a shop, you'll at least know that, you know, this is just something, it's a possibility. But I want to upgrade the Pete the Piano that I keep. And I also want to make like an Ultimate Wiggles guitar. I mean, the two aren't really together in any way. Those are two plans that I want to do in the near future. Getting you know, my switches all mixed up here. This is our LED right here. Master on and off. Overdrive. Plus right there.
This is a rather strange how it's acting. So typically when something like this happens, it seems like we have attached the median to the other side, which is very strange because I don't think that's the case. We'll have to double check that here in a minute. I'm just going to continue mounting for the moment and try to pull those two apart. Maybe that'll help. Because they may just be touching. Alright, so that was the issue. It was touching. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and hot glue this just to make sure that doesn't happen again. Because stuff like that can really mess you up and it can really keep you searching for the issue for quite some time. So let's go ahead and hot glue that just to make sure it doesn't happen. Luckily, I've just kind of dealt with that before, so I was able to identify that. So that's on position for this one. So we're going to go ahead and put that. I'm going to put away from the knob. We're going to put both on positions away from the pot knob. That way when you actually flip them, they're going to give you a little, a little more room to kind of mess with the pot. Let's test the other on position on this one. Alright. So on position on this one will be right here. This is a pretty mean looking little low rider. I didn't realize it, but I just did now. The toggle switches kind of look like devil horns. Yeah, after the live stream, I may do some acrylic painting to this or something. So I think it'd be pretty cool looking with some acrylic paint on it. There we go. So from here... 
The master on and off switch. I don't think it'll be super hard to mount. More so worried about mounting on this hood and then where we're gonna mount the one fourth jack. So it may be a little complicated. We may have to actually mount it to the side right here. I'm gonna say like midway through that door, I think would be a good place to mount it. Now this will probably look pretty goofy, but it'll work. The one four jack's not exactly an easy thing to mount on this. So that looks fine. You always have to make sure it's functional. All right, yes, that is gonna work perfect. So let's just go ahead and solder that back in, and then we will run it. So we should be good there. I'm gonna solder that a little bit better. Let me clean my iron off real quick.
This wire is the worst on heat resistance. It will burn your hand. That's why it's kind of like, I would just hold it down on there until it solders on. It's rather bad with heat resistance. go to feed that through so what I like to do with cars um, you've seen me do it before on that little turbo red car is I like to actually do 1 8 jacks or 1 4 jacks where the exhaust would go. This guy, I think it's a cool little neat touch. But on this one, specifically for functionality, I'm not gonna do that because the way my wires are set up, um, I need a 1 4th output. So if you notice, I don't do 1 8 very often at all. And that's because how I have it running to my computer, it's just much, much easier for me to actually run a 1 4th than a 1 8th. That way I don't need so many adapters and all of that. So the system I'm running right now to feed sound directly into the computer is rather complicated. And it's a complicated process at all because it actually goes from a Mac from recording in GarageBand and then runs into the video and then in editing I have to run the video over, or sorry, run the sound over and then I have to match it up with the auditory sound of actually doing the instruments. but. I think it's worth it. I think the sound is really, really nice in my videos now. Not so much in my vlogs, just in my normal videos. And the Furbies are rather interesting. Just because you can hear so many different things now that they're running directly into the computer, the Furbies are giving a lot different sounds. So let's go ahead and flip it on. Hmm. I feel like I knocked the batteries out somehow or something. Possibly just ran them dead. This is a rather cool. I actually miss stuff doing this. So this ribbon right here, you can actually put the batteries over top of it. So you can see it. And then if you need to ever quick disconnect batteries, you literally just pull this ribbon and it pulls all the batteries out. So it may not actually be that. I may have ran this incorrectly. Oh, you know what? 
That's not good. I definitely messed that up. So we actually need to run the speaker out from a different way than we ran the LEDs. Because if we run that, then the speaker is going to be on a switch as well. And we definitely do not want that. Let's go ahead and try this again. See, this is the fun mess up you don't get to see on my normal vlogs. And when I remake it, you won't get to see it again. <laughs> but accidents and circuit bending for sure do happen. But ironically enough, Usually I don't make too many mistakes when I shoot the vlogs, but when I'm live streaming, you know, that's that's when I fry instruments and that's when all the bad stuff actually happens. <laughs> and then I make stupid decisions. I don't know. Curse of live streams at the moment, I guess. Cut this down a bit. We don't need that much excess wire. Not for the one fourth. So. Works good right there. And we are going to need to cut this wire. Mm. That's being enough. I should cut that or not, but it would just be easier to cut it and latch onto it. We already have the other ones taped up. It's just easier out. So we should be good there. And it's not giving us anything. Really wonder if there's something wrong with this one-fourth jack. 
because it shouldn't be cutting out the way it is. So I see what happened. So it appears one of our wires came loose directly from the board, which is never fun. So it's not actually loose, it's just kind of protruding from the board. Let's go ahead and flip this up, but we're going to hot glue that just to make sure it doesn't come out all the way. And that is not our wire. That is one that was actually made in the factory, so that's kind of strange. Now we're going to go ahead and tape up all the points that are sitting around still loose. Just anything that might cause a short circuit, we're going to tape it up. should be good. So let's go ahead and add the master on and off switch and for that I'm going to do this other side over here and we're going to add the LEDs on. We're going to do that exact same spot just on this side. is good. Let's 
it's now the fun part. Let's go ahead and add the LEDs on. For this, I am going to do pilot holes, meaning I'm going to drill in with a smaller drill bit first. Because LEDs look kind of goofy when they're offset. Now, we're not even sure this is going to work, but we are definitely going to try it. We may have to modify the casing a bit, but we will see. It's actually kind of difficult to see where this is even drilled. For sure in a weird spot. Just giving that a second to dry here.
fun stuff. So that looks pretty dry, not completely dried. We're gonna go and run the other one. This is the one that we may have to modify the case. So that's good, and we're gonna space this out. So it still seems to be shorting out, and it's not our doing, it doesn't seem. I'm thinking there's just something that's touching and I'm not noticing it. So I'm going to go through with a screwdriver and just check everything. Make sure everything's spaced out correctly. Maybe that's it, I don't know. But this is so far. Now, to delve in, what I'm kind of worried about a bit deeper is we have these wheel wells right here. And I'm kind of concerned that these LEDs are going to be hitting the wheel wells or at least not be able to get pushed over so the wheel wells will be able to fit back in. And we might have to modify the wheel wells just because of that. But we will cross that bridge when we get there. If we do have to modify them, it may actually end up looking like the car has LEDs underneath of the, sorry, underneath of the wheels. So it may end up a positive thing. We're just really going to have to, really going to have to see when we get there. I'm going to try to drop both of these in at the same time. This is pretty stable. There we go. And All right, we should be good there. that over
looking pretty good right there. And that is such a cool color on this silver. Anyway, yeah, that looks nice. All right. Now we just have to mount the LED switch, and we should be good. I think that's all of it. And I'm going to do that just directly on the hood, because why the heck not? little bit wider guess that wasn't a smart idea to go from that side actually just ripped those LEDs we just planted in there out so that wasn't good So I'm thinking it's one of these LEDs that keep actually making the instrument cut out and not work. Because every time I kind of mess with those, it does the same thing. Let me see if I have a razor blade somewhere real quick. Sorry about that. Okay. So we're just going to cut down the middle here just to kind of see what's going on because it seems like one of these LEDs keep cutting the instrument out so I'm thinking they're touching on the inside for some reason well that's our hope is that it's one of these LEDs and not something more serious
Alright, both those are separated, so... Shouldn't it be this anymore? I don't know. I'm gonna guess it's the batteries. That's gonna be my guess. So you get to see the user ribbon right there. Let me grab a fresh set of batteries real quick. Okay. These are freshly charged, and we're gonna hope this is the issue. Sometimes, the simplest explanation is the one that works. So we're gonna hope so. Here comes a razor. I'm probably butchering it, but something along those lines. Okay, there we go. Alright, now let's again plant these LEDs in here. I had thought it was the LEDs just because those batteries aren't too terribly old. So I was thinking it was the LEDs, but it seems it was actually the batteries, so that's good. I appreciate it. I know the video's kind of been dragging on the last hour just because we've been having to make, I kind of feel like we've been retreading some stuff, but I don't know. I guess it's better to retread now than when we close up the instrument. So. Okay. That LED is not all the way through, so we're just gonna push it a bit more. It's not doing it again, so I'm not really sure what's going on here. It's very strange. Let's try it again. Let's try pulling all the batteries out and see if it does the same thing. Actually, this one doesn't even look like it's down. Maybe I'm making it more complicated than it is. These rechargeable batteries don't fit in too many things, unfortunately. So maybe just this one will swap out. For a non-rechargeable, it's going to fit a lot better. Yeah, 
I'm very confused on what's going on here because the LEDs aren't touching anything. So they shouldn't be acting this way. What actually appears to be happening is something with the potentiometer here. Because when I move that, it stopped working again. And I'm not 100% confident on that. We're going to hope that's the issue. Now we're going to do the same process here. We're just going to cut down the electrical tape and then see if we see anything that's not supposed to be happening here. Yeah, this is all just very, very strange that this isn't working. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just go ahead and mount everything. And then maybe work on this later and we'll just get it up and mount it and everything looking good. And then we might deal with this later. Yeah, at least you can enjoy the birds singing outside. So funny enough, right outside our deck, we actually have some type of bird, and I have not identified it yet. But if you've ever seen signs, the aliens on signs, they sound almost identical. They do this, like, clicking sound that sounds like aliens communi communicating 
the side of our house. So, rather funny. So, I haven't identified them yet, but there are birds that sound like the aliens from Signs. So, rather funny stuff. So one of these days, hopefully I'll be able to do a live stream without anything going wrong. That would be just freaking awesome. <laughs> because it seems like both live streams I've done so far. I mean, definitely both live streams I've done so far. Um, something has went wrong. This one, hopefully not as bad as the last one. Because this one we got a whole lot farther. And then the instrument quit. But I'm telling you, man. Like... It's only in live streams. It's crazy. So I don't know if it's because I'm rushing things a bit more or what the deal is. I don't know. But it's not exactly ideal. That's for sure. So I'm not modifying the case here. I'm actually just trying to get some of this hot glue out from when it was previously in here. There we go. Still nothing from the car. And I could really use its light as of now. Figure out where this is going in. Okay, there we go. We're good right there. That should be good right there. Just kind of curious if I do this, if this will uh, restore it. It might be our one fourth, I doubt it, but I'm gonna be messing around with this a little bit later anyway, so let's go ahead and remove that and just see if it restores it. It does. That's kind of strange. So at least we can see the LEDs, and I'm going to be working on that a bit later. We may end up needing a resistor between this. What time is it? It's only 12.30. Okay. Let's add a resistor. Let's see if we can get this thing restored by adding a resistor in it. On this, we're going to go a little bit lower in resistance. It's 
go 2k and we're gonna put a 2k um well if i have a 10k that'd be a lot better these are 10 ohms oh and check that out so an ebay seller actually i bought a bunch of resistors from him and he sent it like this and then inside it was it was a very very neat case and then it was up here i thought how creative is that So I'm looking in here for a 10k resistor. Here we go. All right, we are gonna rock with the two 10k resistors here. I'm going to shorten these two. So hopefully we can finish on a good note here. Hopefully this comes back together and is working correctly. I'm going to put some solder on this. Okay, and we should be good right there. Let's hope. And no. So we're gonna need larger than a 10K. And I'm kind of curious on which one it is that's actually giving us this trouble. This theoretically would be your positive that was giving you trouble. Okay, it is. run a 250k to it pretty high resistance but apparently not high enough let's try this Definitely did not intend on experimenting live stream, but we're gonna, we're gonna try it just for the heck of it. So I'd rather end this live stream with this working functionally and correctly. But I have a sneaking suspicion that our one fourth jack is just bad. So... Test everything out. It 
so that's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Visually, this is pretty sick. So that's correct. We just need to touch up the uh, ground on this spot real quick. Because that's what it was, was it was coming loose right there. That wasn't the entire problem, but... That's just the one we're dealing with right now. Okay, now we should be good to go. We did not touch it up good enough. That's what we're looking for right there. To adding this LEDs in here with the wee well still in so this is going to be kind of interesting and hopefully it works correctly so as long as we don't break the LEDs let's keep them running just in case it looks like it may go in we just have to kind of pry them to the side here should be good and it actually does if you see here it actually does add kind of a wheel well effect to it you can see the leds underneath even inside the led or inside the one fourth jack this thing is all leds out that's pretty cool
I'm going to try to push this side down just a tiny bit more because it seems like it's still up. So it seems like the speaker is doing some weird stuff right now, but that is a cool looking bin. So glad we actually got to land on a good note. I'm gonna jump back inside of this and then just wrap up some wires and stuff to make sure the speaker's not shorting out. But it looks good, sounds good. I mean, it has that speaker thing that it's doing, which I'm pretty sure is just a short circuit. But I'm glad we could at least end on a good note and hope everyone is staying safe. Thank you guys for tuning in. I apologize that it took so freaking long to kind of track that down and get the LEDs working again. But hopefully, yeah, hopefully this was fun for you. And, you know, I wish you guys happy Sunday. Thank you for tuning in.